accepted Jody Wilson-Raybould's resignation from Cabinet. Frankly, I am both surprised and disappointed by her decision to step down. And let me tell you why. This resignation is not consistent with conversations I had with Jody a few weeks ago when I asked her to serve as Canada's Minister for Veterans Affairs and Associate Minister of National Defence, nor is it consistent with the conversations we've had lately. Mr. PM, Justin Trudeau reacting to the news that shocked many that uh, the former Justice Minister uh, Jody uh, Wilson-Raybould was resigning. Uh, Eric Merkley from the UBC Policy, uh, Policy Side Department, always here when a big story breaks. Your reaction when you heard the news? Well, we're approaching an election and we have a five alarm tire fire in the center of the Liberal government, um, which is going to be a problem for them moving forward. Why has this become such a big case with SNC-Lavalin and uh, the allegations of pressure uh, upon Jody Wilson-Raybould to help out and avoid criminal prosecution? Well, this is a pretty big deal. So the, the context here is that in 2018, the Liberal government slipped something into an omnibus bill, a uh, deferred prosecution agreement, which allows corporations to avoid cr criminal charges in exchange for paying fines at the discretion of prosecutors and the Attorney General. Uh, so the former Justice Minister had the opportunity to use this in the SNC-Lavalin case. Uh, she declined to do so um, and sh shortly thereafter was demoted to Veterans Affairs, uh, probably not coincidentally. Um, so that's kind of the setup. Um, and then a Globe and Mail story obviously came out saying that she was pressured and now that's um, the, 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 the he said, she said right now is very confusing because we just don't have all the information right now. Well, she can only say so much and in the statement she revealed yesterday, okay. we didn't get a concrete reason for her quitting and I understand she's bound by uh, client solicitor privilege. But what does this statement really mean for the Liberal Party? This is an important year being an election year. Yeah. What are the implications? Well, she's very clearly going to speak. She's retained as a former Supreme Court justice. You don't do that if you're going to stay quiet. So she's going over the legal uh, implications to see what she can say. She wants to tell her story. Um, she's pr deservedly very mad. They've treated her very badly, uh, calling her difficult, all, these, all this sexist language that Trudeau's surrogates have been parading around. Uh, it's been quite a sight to behold. Uh, she's deservedly angry, and she's going to tell her story. And, and that story is going to come out. Uh, step by step all the way up till the next election. Um, it, there's no end in sight, really, um, and that is going to hurt them. The narrative of this case with SNC-Lavalin, how does it differ when you look at what is being said across Canada versus what is being said in Quebec? Well, and that's, and that's the, the public, public opinion implications are very unclear at this stage. And the, the issue is that SNC-Lavalin is a big employer in Quebec. It's one of their corporate titans. They employ thousands of people. So opinion leaders uh, have been very much on side with Trudeau in Quebec, unlike in the rest of Canada. Uh, and the, the key is, in the next election, Trudeau is dependent on a very big block of seats in Quebec to deliver him a majority government. Uh, his polling numbers have deteriorated over time as these scandals have started to take their toll. But he's still doing pretty well in Quebec because the NDP have collapsed there. So the fallout from this might be minimized to the extent that in Quebec, this isn't seen as a big deal. So that's something to watch for moving forward. And for strategy of other political competitors, what the NDP and the Conservatives can do with this story over the next few months, what could you see happening? Well, the, the, the disastrous thing that the Liberals have done now, like tarring the credibility uh, of the former Attorney General, uh, has, has left themselves open on the left flank. Um, the, the sexist language they've used, it's going to anger women's groups. It's angering uh, Indigenous groups. Um, these are, are critical components opponents to a uh, liberal re-election, um, that you know, they need support on the left uh, or they're going to support the NDP. So this is an opening for Jagmeet Singh. Uh, and to the extent that this helps the NDP, it also indirectly helps the Conservatives because a strong NDP allows vote splitting to happen. It allows Conservatives to win seats in Ontario with 35, 36 percent of the vote. Um, they can only win a majority government with a strong NDP. Uh, so, uh, to the extent that this damages the Liberal brand on the left, helps the NDP, helps the Conservatives, um, the only wild card is Quebec. And so those are the things to, to watch for for the next election. Well, today the House of Commons Justice Committee will be meeting and uh, have a decision to make on whether or not to launch a study uh, into this case uh, with SNC-Lavalin. I think the question of trust and transparency is a big one when we look at politics across this country. What is the best thing the Liberals can do in this case? 
Oh, they've dug themselves quite the hole that it's it's hard to see. Um, the, the best thing that they can do is they have to, you know, and they've, they've flip-flopped uh, on their story so often, but I think they need to stop what they're doing and acknowledge her perspective on this. Um, and, you know, it would, wouldn't surprise me if they offered up a scapegoat in the, in the Prime Minister's office that, you know, this ex-individual did some, made some unfortunate error uh, to try to close the book on this because a long-running battle with their former minister is not going to do them any favors. So I, I would see uh, that's a possible ending point. Well, we'll watch it closely to see what statements are made on either side uh, of this uh, argument. Uh, Eric, appreciate you coming by as always. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, we'll take a break. More to come here on Wednesday's BT, your viral videos of the day in the